Hello and welcome to Unlock Your Vitality with Magali on a Journey. I'm your host, Magali Matthew. Here we cover all things vitality, that is living full of energy. From gut health to spirituality, nutrition to movement, we peel back the layers and unlock ways to heal and feel our best selves, one conscious habit at a time. Stick around, let's dive on in. I'm so excited you're here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the show. I'm so excited this week. We have a very special guest on, Olivia Simet. Olivia is a wellness coach and influencer who is on a mission to promote body positivity and empower women to love themselves and be confident AF. I love that. Her message of body positivity encourages women to embrace their bodies as they are, to love themselves, and to focus on self-care rather than striving for unrealistic body standards. Olivia, thank you so much for being here and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I align with everything that you do. And so it's such a pleasure to be here right now. Thank you. Yeah, it's been awesome to uh, support each other in our journeys through social media and in real life. So let's start. How, How did your wellness journey begin for you? Ah, that's such a good question. Thank you. Well, my story really begins, I mean, everyone that knows me now knows that I'm all about health and wellness and healthy lifestyle and body positivity, but it was not always that way because when I was 12, I moved from my country of origin, from France, to the Middle East. And when I arrived in the Middle East, it was a new language. I didn't have friends. I missed my closed family. And I just felt really lonely. And back then, you know, everything that I knew was ripped from under me, like literally. And so as a result, I turned to food for comfort, to comfort my loneliness. And that's how it was during my teenage years. You know, I was just, you know, feeling lonely, feeling kind of like in that bubble of where I was turning to food and I was just unhappy. And over the years, uh, later on, When I reached like 19, 20 years old, there was that day when I went to the mall, uh, you know, I was shopping around. I was super excited to shop and I went to the fitting room and as I was trying outfit in the fitting room, nothing fit, nothing. And in that moment, in that fitting room, I just felt I had like that wake up call that I had to do something to feel better in my skin. And that thing that I needed to do, I thought it was like, you know, losing the weight, which, you know, really helped me in terms of like feeling better in my skin, feeling better in my body, you know, not, not being out of breath after like 15 minutes. And then I started that journey, changing my habits. I reached out for help. I hired a health coach. And that's when really I started shifting my habits of like, you know, not necessarily removing all the unhealthy food and like going super hardcore, but really just introducing new type of foods that I was not used to eat, you know? So vegetables and healthy carbs, like I was not used to eat this stuff. And so over the few, the next few months after working with that house coach, I started losing weight. I started feeling better. And even though I felt better in my skin and I reached my weight loss goal, which was, you know, I, I lost 70 pounds. So wow. yeah, I started exercising, eating better and definitely saw a difference in my, in my body. But I still felt like that I was missing confidence. I was still having those feelings of feeling unworthy, feeling um, like I couldn't express myself fully. I had like deep rooted kind of like issues that I thought the weight loss would help me, but then I realized that was not really the solution. And so that's when really my, my wellness journey really started. It was after the weight loss journey and really going to the root cause and really tackling the mindset side of like my thoughts, my self-talk, uh, you know, going with a therapist and starting journaling and doing all of that stuff. And so today I, I'm a new person, you know, I'm way more confident. I feel light, I feel free. I feel like I, c- I can express myself. And so for me, it's all about, you know, body and mind, because I think like you think 
they're interconnected. Yeah, hundred percent. I love that. And I love, I mean, thank you for sharing your story and, and painting that picture of like you in a fitting room and nothing fitting because I'm sure we've all been there at some point or another. And I love also how your journey started with the physical and that weight loss, but then you realize that actually the mind hadn't changed right throughout even losing the weight. Let's, we'll definitely go into mindset, but before we do what advice would you have for somebody who's maybe back there at the fitting room where you were and who's looking into or wanting to begin their weight loss journey, but who feels really intimidated, who feels like they're not going to reach their goal? How how would you advise them to start? Oh, that's such a great question. Thank you. I think the f- there is four main things that I think we should apply to any type of you know, new journey or new healthy lifestyle changes, especially if we want it to last and not, you know, keep spiraling into kind of like going super all in and being super motivated and seeing results, but then spiraling back into those old habits. And I think those four things to prevent that to happen is the first one is definitely working on self-talk because self-talk You know, it's really asking yourself that question, like, why do I feel intimidated, right? Is it because I think it will take forever, you know? Because usually that intimidating voice is kind of like our ego that compares all of our previous experiences. And it's like, you already failed so many times. There is no no way you're going to be able to, you know, succeed this time. And it's kind of like an automatic system that we fall into. So I think first really starting to watch our self-talk and intercepting those moments where we have that nagging voice that is intimidating, right? When we we have like those moments where we doubt ourselves, you know, and just just noticing and naming it is enough. We don't have to like try to battle against it or just being aware because awareness is the first step. And I'm sure you agree with that. Right. Uh, The second one is definitely incremental improvements uh, and really starting small. I know that as much as, you know, we want to change and we want to transform and and as much as we are motivated, it is proven by research that starting small is what makes it sustainable. And so really making it instead of going every day for, you know, an hour or even 30 minutes, How about, you know, once a week for 15 minutes and then increments from there and start adding, you know, another 15 minutes the second month, you know, and maybe once a week and then twice a week. But just really starting small is a recipe for success in any type of goal that you set, right? Like same for myself. And I tried as much as sometimes I want to go on in, I'm like, if you want to keep consistent, if you really want to stick to it, like. You know, don't burn yourself out and try to like going slow with it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, the book Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg really helped me understand that like really, really slow and then having like a trigger before that. I love it. I think it can be applied of obviously to weight loss, but really to anything. I love that. Yeah, definitely. The trigger thing for sure is helping with habits. I agree with you. Another one is definitely focusing on process goals rather than focusing on the end goal. Because so many times when we start a weight loss journey, it's like, you know, I want to I wanna lose 50 pounds or 30 pounds. And it's just focusing on that end goal and stepping on the scale and just focusing on that number all the time. And it's not really the best way because... If you want it to be sustainable, you have to focus on the process and on the goals that are tied to the process. So it's like, you know, what goals can I do today that will move me closer to that 50 pounds goal? Is it like maybe prepping my vegetables when I go grocery shopping and, you know, washing them and cutting them so it's ready and visually available for me when I open the fridge, right? Something as simple as that is a process goal. Definitely focusing on on process goal. Yeah. I love that. I think it's so important because, yeah, for everything, right, we can be so focused on the destination, on the end goal, and there's so many things. And 
I don't know about you, but I was talking to a friend um, this weekend and we were saying how we feel like, especially with weight loss and with how we are, so much of as women, our life is like looking back at pictures and feeling like, oh my God, I looked amazing then. But then remembering how we actually felt in that picture, feeling like we weren't where we wanted to be. And so I love that focusing on, yeah, the present and the process and like what you can do today and how it can help make you feel better. I love that. Yeah, because even when it comes to comparing, like you mentioned, you know, comparing our body to the past or comparing uh, how we felt in the past and noticing that even in that time, we were still like aiming for something else. And so that also comes back to not being happy to with ourselves in that moment, right? And that's also a big piece. So definitely I agree with you. Another one that is super important too, I think is living as if you were already at that goal. So asking yourself, you know, what that type of person is doing on a daily basis, that type of person that has, you know, that type of body that you want or, you know, that energy or stamina, right? They're probably training multiple times a week. Maybe they're doing different type of training. What are they eating, right? What are they shopping when they go to the, the grocery shop, right? So really living as if you are already in that goal and acting like that person is definitely a great way to, to start, you know, to start that new lifestyle journey. Change is like one thought, one action away from, from the results that we want. It's just like acting on it and shutting that voice down. So we talk a little bit about comparison. Um, we live in a world full of social media and it can be, I think, a source of inspiration and support, but it can also be, especially in a weight loss journey, a trigger for that negative self-talk, that comparison. How can we use social media in a positive way when it comes to body positivity and weight loss? Because social media, like you mentioned, it can be a source of inspiration, but let's not forget that it also drives a lot of mental illness and suicide rates in today's era. And that's because, first of all, I was that type of person that was scrolling on social media and that had unrealistic standard. Like, I would definitely save like those pictures of like fitness models. I would even print those pictures and I would put them over all over my place. That's like, you know, when I look at this, it motivates me to like keep going with my goals. But it was actually doing the opposite because subconsciously what it was making me feel like unworthy and mm -hmm. that I was not enough, you know, that I was not enough right now, which is something that I heal now. But I think that 97% of the woman feels inadequate. That's from a research And they feel inadequate because they can't meet those images that we see on social media so uh, or on the TV. So that's a thing. And when it comes to social media, I think my best advice is to start tailoring your social media and start pressing the unfollow buttons to any type of accounts that makes you feel like you're not enough. Or, you know, those accounts where like you feel you look at this picture and you're like, oh my God, I need to do a diet right now. Like I need to hop on a diet or like something is wrong with me. Like look at them, right? Anytime that doubts pops up, at least for me, that's what I do now. I just unfollow and I just tailored my whole feed with people that inspires me, people that, you know, are motivating, people that are body positive because that's what I want to see. I don't want to see like unrealistic bodies that are going to make me feel like crap, you know? Yeah. We'll definitely share your social and everything also for people to follow you because you're really embodying that like through your social media. It's definitely a source of inspiration and a source of like, yeah, motivation for people to keep going, for people to tune in, whether it started from body positivity, but also now like so many tips around mindset. Um, so that's really beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So let's go into that positive self-image. What are some tips for people that want to develop 
a positive self-image, improve their self-esteem. Yeah. What, what are some of the tips that you've encountered that have helped you? Yeah, that, that's definitely a process, by the way. So the same way it's a process to go on a weight loss journey or to adjust to new healthy lifestyle habits, right? It's still also a process to adjust to feeling good in your current body. It starts with acceptance, right? I think that's the biggest one. And I was literally learning about how to accept my body And it was really hard, especially after, so I I have a two years old now. Uh, During my pregnancy, and it was a COVID pregnancy because I was pregnant during COVID, I was definitely like having a bunch of cravings and turning to food for comfort again at some times for sure. And so I gained a lot of weight plus the pregnancy. So my body completely changed during the pregnancy. And so after the pregnancy, the first few months, it was really hard for me I just really struggled, you know? And so I started that process of like body acceptance. And that's something that I really embody now and that I implement with my coaching clients too, because even if I coach them on like fitness and like those body goals that they want to reach, it always starts with acceptance, even if you want to change your body. And it's a process. It takes time. And for me, it was really about accepting that I have things that I don't like about my body. And I accept that. Like, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm okay that I have my lower belly a little bit like hanging. It's okay. Like, I'm okay with that. Before, I would not be okay with that. I would fight it. I would like restrict diet as crazy, burn myself out, go on extreme like high intensity workouts to finally like mess up my hormones. Now I'm at a place where like, I'm okay with it. For me, one of the tips that has really helped in accepting that is the EFT or emotional freedom technique or tapping. I don't know if you've dabbled in tapping. I haven't done tapping, but I know that it's very successful. Yeah. Tell me more. Yeah. I love it because it's like, so you're tapping different points and you're saying, you know, for example, it could be, even though I don't like my belly, I still love and accept myself fully, even though, and then you keep filling like whatever those sentences are. And then I still love and accept myself fully. It's such a beautiful like technique to help you have that mindset shift and really believe what you're actually saying. Because at the beginning, we all know that even though we say those things, we don't really believe them yet. Yeah, I love it. So I have really loved seeing how your journey has gone from, we talked about it, the physical, and now you're more, I think like, I always love saying this, but peeling back the layers to really work on that mindset. Why is it so important that someone really finds that road to optimal health and focus to focus really on their mindset? We've touched about it a little bit, but like, let's go deeper so people can really understand the concept. I love mindset questions. <laughs> Well, mindset, I think, is, all, is, is where everything starts. Our internal reality, our thoughts, everything that is going on inside, always going to reflect our outside, our external reality. And another thing is that our mind always compared to the past. So it's really important because if in the past you try different, like, new healthy lifestyle journey and you quote unquote failed. I don't like this word because I don't think there is like failure. There is always a learning experience from any situation. But yeah, I mean, if you didn't reach your goal for any reason or you spiraled back and you never get to like reach that goal of yours, I think that the mindset part is crucial because our our mind tend to compare to the past all the time. That's a coping mechanism. And so it always goes like, oh, you failed. So you're probably going to fail this time too. And then it prevents us from reaching our full potential, from reaching our goals, from, you know, breaking and breaking through those type of thoughts. I think the mindset is key. I think this is where it all starts. And again, so we touched on like self-talk, which is a huge part of mindset. Really like having realistic expectations is a huge one too. And that's a big part of mindset, like being realistic, you know, of what do you think you can achieve and how you're going to get there. Yeah. And also the fact that it takes time, as you said earlier, I think we're so used to like wanting a quick fix and 
you know, there's so much in the wellness space that's like, here's this pill or this new shake or this new thing that's going to like change everything. But actually that's one, that's a lot of BS, honestly, a lot of the time, but also, and being aware of your thoughts and slowly being able to change them also takes time. Yeah, so true. Yeah, being realistic, I agree with you. And, and really noticing those thoughts on a regular basis, whether it's to just being aware, you know, and, and not judging again, just being aware of the thoughts that are going in our head. But for me, what really, really helps, and I know you're good, I mean, you're big into that too, is journaling. For example, these past few days, I had a lot going on in my head, like with my thoughts. And I was really overwhelmed with those thoughts. And I was like, you know, and and usually the thing with mindset is that most of the time it's repetitive. We repeat the same thoughts over and over again. So it's like we have 60,000 thoughts. They're all like super repetitive and they go like on loop. So the goal is really to break that loop and start shifting that neural pathway and build a new neural pathway, which is a workout for our brain. But that starts with awareness and that starts with every time it happens, every time those type of thoughts, nagging voice, thoughts that are, you know, disempowering, just noticing and being like, okay, I see you. And every time we notice and see them, we literally build that prefrontal cortex, those new neural pathway that are going to help us change habits because a habit is a train of thoughts. A habit is literally a neural pathway that we're just going through that trigger. Like we see something, we go through that behavior, we get that reward. And once we get that reward, we're accustomed to just go through that loop again and again and again, every time we get that trigger. Yeah. Mindset is big. There's so much I can sell mindset. (laughs) I love that you brought up journaling. What does your journaling practice look like? Oh my God. So for me, I know there is so many like journaling practices, like brain dumping and manifesting and so many. But for me, honestly, I just brain dump everything that is going on in my head. That's my favorite way. Whatever stuff I'm struggling with or that bothers me or things like that. And I just write it down on paper and I immediately feel like lighter. What about you? Similar, a lot of times it's just like getting it out and getting it on the page, especially sometimes when I'm really stuck in a negative pattern, I'll actually push myself to write like 10 things I'm grateful for or practice gratitude in that way just to like help me snap out of it because I've also found myself in the past being continuing in that spiral, even if I journal and even if I like get it out on the page. So sometimes helping me shift into like a more positive without disassociating, without, you know, repressing and and pushing things down. But just sometimes we need to like a little shake up and being like, hey, life is actually really good too. Yes, these things are really hard and they're real and I want to deal with them. And like, I have a roof over my head. My husband is amazing. I love my family. Like, there's so many beautiful things that I can still be grateful for. I love that. I'm so aligned with that. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. And I also have a gratitude practice, like, on a regular basis, every day, every morning. And that started back, like, two years ago when I was, like, inside my depression. I was super depressed. I had very negative thoughts. And I started doing that practice with my gratitude journal of like writing three things I'm grateful for every morning and three things that I'm happy that happened, you know, throughout the day, every evening. And over the few months after that, after practicing that on a regular basis, I saw immediate like shifts in my mental health. And that's why every time I coach like clients now, when we do like training and nutrition I have them order the gratitude journal. They have that part of their practice and same, they they see immediate improvements. I really saw the beauty of gratitude during COVID. Like there was just a time where things were so negative and so harsh and that's when I really picked it up. And at the end of the day, it's mindset shift, right? Like we're talking about the same thing, just looks different and has like a specific practice. Again, it's just bringing in these beautiful positive thoughts into your mind yes 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 and that's how you attract more positive stuff into your life too because you literally raise your vibration 
because you're not, you're focusing on the positive. Positive is high vibration. And so suddenly things start to shift. And like you mentioned, you know, you start feeling better. And, and I think we have a lot to be grateful for. It's hard sometimes to feel grateful for certain things, but when you're able to find a positive out, like the gift out of any negative situation, that's when you activate like your sage brain, which is literally the, the brain that is, you know, empathy and the part of the brain that is making us feel all of those good feelings and happiness. <laughs> We're so aligned. Yeah. <laughs> You talked a little bit about like coaching some clients and things. Tell us like if people are interested in understanding more of what you do, like um, how do you work with people one-on-one? -on -one? I know you also have programs. Tell us a little bit about it. Thank you. Yeah, I do offer one-on-one -on -one, uh, for anyone who's looking to more like fitness regimen with nutrition and mindset. So it's kind of like the whole shabang. Uh, but I do have a, another program that is called Thriving Fit Squad. And it's an amazing program. It's a three months fitness routine with weekly masterclasses on mindset, especially around healing from toxic shame and from uh, toxic diet culture and creating healthy habits that last. And all of this is on my Instagram or on the website, thrivingfitsquad.com or on my Instagram at this is Odilia Simet. I love it. Um, so usually we end this with some rapid fire questions. So I want to go through those. I do want to just ask you one question because we didn't even touch on it and it is diet culture. So you shifted obviously from this, and I know this from just speaking with you and from your Instagram, but tell us a little bit about why diet culture is so toxic in today's body positivity world. Yeah, it's simply because it uh, promotes unrealistic expectations and it pushes people to, you know, go into those crazy diets where they restrict way too much calories. And it's that thing where they fall into, you know, restricting and starving themselves, losing the weight, but then gaining the weight back because our body goes into survival mode when we do that. And it activates our survival brain. Our, we are built for survival as human, right? That's what we're built to. So even if we go on a crazy diet and it works for us, it's not usually working for a long time because we're built for survival. And it's the reason why we usually go back all out when we restrict way too much. That's usually what happens. And so for me, diet culture is just aiming for unrealistic body standard and unrealistic expectations. And yeah, anything that is lower than 1,200 calories is already way too low, 1,200 included. And when I start working with clients, they are able to lose weight by eating more, not eating less, because they're literally not able to lose weight because their body is under too much stress from not having enough calories and from their body having adapted to that too low caloric intake. So I usually take them through a reverse dieting. So I, you know, boost their metab metabolism, have them eat the proper amount of calories for their body, for their energetic output, because, you know, it takes calories to digest, to sleep, to do all of those things. I think that diet culture is just really toxic. I'm not aligned with that for sure. Yeah, I totally feel you there. And I'm glad we were able to touch on it. All right, let's go to the rapid fire. So a few questions. So this podcast is called Unlock Your Vitality. So how do you unlock your vitality these days? What are What's like one or two things that you've been exploring that really feed your vitality or energy? Oh, I love that question. So my thing that feed my vitality and energy is to try as much as possible to come back to the present moment when I can and just be really, really present, even if it's a few seconds, multiple times throughout the day. You know, when I have like those racing thoughts or overwhelmed feeling, being able to just stop and admire a piece of tree or, you know, water, lake, whatever. That what really brings me vitality. It's to get back to the present moment and be like, oh, whoa, like I was so much in my head. Like, okay, let's get back. I'm here. That fuels me. I love it. Beautiful. Um, the next one is, what are you saying no to these days? 
I'm saying no to anything that is not aligned with me anymore. You know, something social or something that I'm not necessarily aligned anymore. I'm not afraid to say no. Uh, I literally took a course on how to say no because before I would be a people pleaser. So I had to like go through how to say no confidently and really say the word no so it's clear, but not in a mean way, in a cool way. And so, yeah, let's not forget that when we say no to something, we say yes to something else that, you know, might bring us more happiness and be more aligned with what we are supposed to do. Exactly. I love that. What is on your nightstand? On my nightstand? My gratitude journal and my water bottle. <laughs> love it. And then the last one is if you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh, that's such a good one. Mm, it would be the universe catch your back don't stress too much because it's all about cause and effect and you can't control anything <laughs> I love that that's beautiful Olivia thank you so much this was such an empowering conversation I'm sure our listeners are going to love it um, so thank you it was so good to have you on no thank you thank you so much for having me in your podcast because I love you and I love your podcast and I'm so excited to listen to this podcast and to see you again in real life too. Yes. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank and you. we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye.